did you know that the Swiss Travel Pass is usually not the best train pass for most Swiss travelers? We're Jana and Brett, and our last video about Swiss train passes has over 100,000 views, but we still get plenty of questions. And that's because we realize there's more to understanding this wide world of train passes than meets the eye. After you finish this video, you'll have answers to your biggest questions about Swiss train passes before you even know you have them. And whether or not you've seen that other video, this one will cover 19 things to know about the types of passes, discounts, buying tickets, traveling with kids, dogs, bikes, and so much more. So grab your notebook and let's go. And if you haven't seen our ultimate guide to Swiss train passes, stick around and we'll queue that up for you in the end. Here's the thing, traveling Switzerland can be expensive, but it doesn't have to be. In almost every case, you will save money with some type of Swiss rail pass. Honestly, the only exceptions we can think of are if you're just taking a short trip to a city or if you're renting a car with multiple people and not planning to visit the mountains. There's not one pass that will cover you 100% on every ride in Switzerland. If you were hoping it would be easy to just buy one Swiss train pass and then never have to think about buying tickets again, we're sorry, but it's just not that easy. This is partially why the maze of Swiss train passes can be so confusing. If you're like most Swiss travelers, you might assume that this is what the Swiss Travel Pass does, and it does cover your rides 100% at lower elevations. But you'd be in for a nasty surprise when you discover that it only gives you a discount on many mountain rides, usually 50%, but sometimes only 25%. And that's why this video and the next 17 tips are absolutely necessary. Okay, so how many passes are there? Well, there's national passes and there are regional passes. The national passes are valid throughout the entire country of Switzerland, and they include the famous Swiss travel pass, day passes, and the Swiss half fare card, which is basically like a 50% discount on every train ticket you buy. There are a bunch of regional passes, so we're not going to name them all, but the popular ones include the Top of Europe Pass and the Berner Oberlin Pass. In general, the regional Swiss train passes provide better coverage in their area of validity than the national ones do in the same area. There are also Europe-wide passes that work in Switzerland. Here we're talking about those Eurail and Interrail passes. They're basically the same thing, but the Interrail pass is made for European residents, while the Eurail pass is made for non-Europeans. Like the Swiss Travel Pass, these passes provide great coverage at lower elevations and between major cities. But that's also when ticket prices tend to be at their cheapest, and train passes just aren't as valuable. And once you make it to Interlaken, for example, you'll only get a 50% discount for every ride toward the Lauterbrunnen Valley and just a 25% discount on all major mountain lifts. So it works similar to the Swiss Travel Pass, but you'll find yourself paying more for extra tickets if you want to spend a lot of time in the mountains. I'm not at all saying you should never buy one of these passes. They're fantastic for the right kind of traveler on a certain type of trip, especially if you've already purchased one to visit multiple countries on a grand Euro trip. If you're feeling a little overwhelmed, just stick with us. These 19 tips will help you grasp the basics about Swiss train passes before you ever research, choose, or buy one. And the next video will dive deep into each pass to help you choose which one is best for you. So for now, let's keep plugging through these tips. Time of year not only impacts what you stuff into your suitcase, but also which train pass you buy. The national and Europe-wide passes are available every day of the year, but not all of the regional passes are available year-round. For example, the Berner Oberlin Pass and the Jungfrau Travel Pass are only available during the summer season. And it's a little weird, but the Top of Europe Pass has both a summer and a winter version. So before you book your trip, double check that the regional pass you want is available during your travel dates. We also have a free spreadsheet download to help you know which train passes are available month by month, and we'll drop a link to that in the description below. No matter when you visit, take a good long look at a half fare card. Since we produced our first train pass video, we've received hundreds of questions about Swiss rail passes. And now we even offer consultations to help travelers like you choose a train pass that saves you time and money. And a high, high percentage of the time, we find that the half fare card or the half fare card paired with a regional pass is the best buy. Here are a few reasons why. First, you'll often get a discount on your regional pass if you also have the half fare card. Sometimes this discount is even more than the cost of the half fare card itself. So in this case, too good to be true is actually true. Second, if you're flying into Switzerland and traveling to a part of the country that's covered by one of these regional passes, 
then the savings just from those rides to and from the airport will be substantial. Again, practically a no-brainer. Third, if you ride any public transportation not covered by another pass, then you'll enjoy a 50% discount on every trip you take. And this applies throughout the entire country, further increasing your savings, which is why you really don't need a train pass that covers you 100% on every ride in order to save money. Which brings me to a final point. Sometimes the best thing you could do for your budget is to pay 120 francs for the half fare card and just leave it at that. Let's do some math, shall we? An eight day Swiss travel pass costs 389 Swiss franc, which is 269 more than the half fare card. Sure, you'll pay 50% for all your tickets with a half fare card, but do you realize how hard it is to spend 270 francs on transportation in just a week when you're only paying 50%? But those mountain lifts are expensive, you say? But keep in mind that the Swiss Travel Pass only gives you a 50% discount on most of those anyway, so it's equal with a half fare card there. Quick summary, the half fare card is one of the best values in Swiss Travel, so take it seriously. So does the Swiss half fare card give you a discount on the purchase of the Swiss travel pass? Nope, if only it were that easy. That's why it rarely makes sense to buy both the Swiss travel pass and the half fare card together. We had so many questions about this on our first train pass video, so we wanted to make sure and clarify here. The biggest thing to remember is that the half fare card does not provide you a discount on the purchase of your Swiss travel pass. Sorry. The SBB mobile app is your friend. Seriously, it's the best public transportation app for any country we've seen. And it's also the best way to check timetables, buy tickets, and to figure out the quickest route from point A to point B. Even if you're covered by a Swiss Rail Pass and never plan to buy tickets, it's ultra convenient. That means you never have to stop into a rail office for info or show up at the station early without knowing when the next train leaves. It sucks to show up just after a train leaves. <laughs> It sucks to show up just after a train leaves with 29 minutes to wait until the next one, knowing you could have spent that time sitting and sipping that beer just a little bit longer. To really benefit from the SVB mobile app, you're gonna need cell phone data. And unfortunately, Wi-Fi is not as extensive in Switzerland as it is in the US. That means it's not at every restaurant, grocery store, gas station, and beyond. And the reality is that you're mainly gonna use the SVB mobile app on the go. Now we've used loads of data plans over the years, but we think the easiest thing is an eSIM card. That way you don't have to go into a store and you don't have to take off your earrings to pop in a brand new SIM card. Last summer we tried an eSIM from Olafly and we were super impressed that it was so easy to set up and it worked everywhere we went in the Swiss Alps. So to help you get started with data and the SVB mobile app, we scored you a discount code from Olafly so you can find the link and discount in the description below. In general, tickets and passes do not increase in price as your travel date gets closer. Prices on the Swiss travel pass, half fare card, and regional passes pretty much stay the same, though they could of course increase from year to year. And the Swiss travel pass once in a while has a promotion running. Tickets also have a set price per route, regardless of the time of year, day of the week, or time of day. I really like this because it allows you to maintain flexibility in your travel plans without feeling like you're losing money by booking at the last minute. However, there are ways to save money if you book early, and that's what these next two points are about. If you have the Swiss half fare card, you can buy a day pass for only 75 franc, and this can even be purchased the same day, which is really nice for last minute travel plans. Saver day passes can be bought as much as 60 days in advance of travel, and they cost 29 with the Swiss half fare card or 52 if you don't have it, but the prices do vary based on demand and dates. Keep in mind though that these are non-refundable, so make sure you plan to travel on that day no matter the weather. These two kinds of day passes are great if you're traveling into Switzerland from another country for a single day and planning to ride lots of trains, or if you just need one more day of train travel after your train pass expires. But if you're planning a long route of travel in one day, like on the Glacier Express or Bernina Express, then you could save a ton of money by buying a day pass in advance. Like the Saver Day Passes, Super Saver tickets can also be purchased for a point-to-point -point route up to 60 days in advance and offer the potential for savings based on demand. You can buy these online or through the SBB mobile app, and they'll be displayed automatically using a percentage symbol if they're available. Super Saver tickets are for a specific time and train connections, so your plans need to be firm in order to take advantage, because refunds are only available within the first 30 minutes of your purchase just in case you make a mistake. 
but you really can save money with these super saver tickets. We really like them for traveling to the airport when we're flying out of Switzerland. And sometimes you can even find first class tickets cheaper than second class in this way. Speaking of first class, is it worth it? In general, we don't think it's worth splurging on first class. There's just very little difference in most trains, especially the regional ones or in the mountains. In fact, the regional passes that you're most likely to buy are only available in second class. But we have heard that first class tickets on long scenic routes like the Glacier Express or Bernina Express are totally worthwhile, although we haven't tried it yet. Typically, seat reservations are not necessary and not worth the money. They're required on some scenic trains like the Glacier Express, and you'll have to book those through the corresponding websites. You'll also see that reservations are encouraged for the train to Jungfrau Joch, but visiting midweek or early in the morning makes that unnecessary in our opinion. So for most train travel throughout Switzerland, you won't need a reservation. Most intercity trains allow them, and you can pay five francs to do so if you'd like. But we've ridden these plenty of times and have never made a reservation. One exception to note, if you're traveling to or from another country during peak season, then a reservation might be handy. What if you're traveling with kids? Well, honestly, Switzerland may be one of the most family-friendly destinations simply because of how affordable it is to travel with kids on public transportation. So here are a few quick fire answers. Kids under six are always free. Kids ages six to 15 travel for free with a Swiss family card when they're traveling with a parent or guardian who has a valid ticket or pass. And you can request the Swiss family card for free when you buy the Swiss half fare card or the Swiss travel pass. If you're traveling with a six to 15 year old grandchild or just a child that's not your own, then the children's co-travel card is a great option for just 30 Swiss franc. For the most part, eh, card. For the most part, you're considered an adult after the age of 16. However, the Swiss travel pass, year rail, and interrail passes offer a youth discount for people into their mid 20s. But what about dogs and bikes? Small dogs under 30 centimeters travel for free when in a carrier, but larger dogs must have a second class half fare ticket regardless of which class you ride in. You can also buy dog passes like the 25 franc day pass. And the Berner Oberlin Regional Pass is also available for dogs for just 30 francs for up to 10 days. Like dogs, bikes require a ticket too, which can be purchased at the half fare price. And you'll also need a reservation for your bike on most intercity trains for a good part of the year. But you can also buy a day pass for your bike for just 14 francs. There are quite a few rules about when and how to travel with a bike, so be sure to read up on the details if this applies to you. Here's the thing. A Swiss Rail Pass obviously offers you discounts on transportation, but it also provides some other benefits too. With the Swiss Travel Pass, you get free admission to more than 500 museums across the country. And with the Berner Oberlin Pass, you get a discounted admission to loads of attractions throughout the region too. Now, this doesn't mean you should buy a pass just for those perks, but it's worth looking into, especially if you know which museums you wanna visit or activities you wanna do during your trip. Studying the validity maps for each of the passes is the only way to know where they will and won't work. I know it doesn't sound fun, but you really need to compare the maps for a few of those passes once you know where you want to visit. For example, the Top of Europe Pass has solid coverage from Interlaken in toward the mountains, but the Berner Oberlin Pass covers way more territory. Extra lifts, village buses, lake travel, and lots more even beyond the Jungfrau region. I've heard a few people say they chose the top of Europe Pass because they wouldn't be able to visit most of the places covered by the Berner Oberlin Pass. But for most of them, that Berner Oberlin Pass could have actually saved them money. So don't worry if you can't take advantage of everything offered in a pass. If it's the best pass for the trip you have planned, buy it. So how do you know which Swiss train pass is best for you? First, watch this video, our ultimate guide to Swiss rail passes. Then download our free checklist to help you decide which Swiss Rail Pass is best for you in just a few easy steps. So watch that video, click that download, and we'll see you in Switzerland.